Hello everyone and welcome back to Rebooted MCU. Today we are here with Rebooted MCU Phase 4 Part 8. Now before we get started I want to go ahead and plug the Discord server and the Instagram page which can be found at the links in the description below. There are a lot of cool people in the Discord server and I make a lot of cool posts on the Instagram page. But especially the Discord server it's a great way to connect with other members of the community. We have a lot of discussions ranging from current MCU topics to me dropping previews and hints of what's coming up in Rebooted MCU. So if you want to get ahead of the game and sort of see some stuff that's either in the works or coming down the pipeline, make sure to join the Discord. Again, the link is down below. But with that being said, we have a very big episode today, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. The eighth project of Rebooted MCU is Spider-Man, King of the Neighborhood. The movie opens up as we see two figures sitting at a coffee shop. One of the figures begins talking. So, Johnny, when you lost them, what did you do due to cope with the loss, the pain you felt? The figure is revealed to be Peter Parker, played by Tom Holland, who is sitting across the table from Johnny Storm, played by Andrew Garfield, who says, Well, when they were all gone, I felt helpless. Maybe mature a lot. Start to appreciate the little things that you had. Reed's nerdy tangents. Ben's dumb jokes. Sue's caring smile. I cherished those. I tried to act to make them proud with everything I did. But now that they're back, I'm doing everything I can to rekindle my relationship with them. But Peter, Tony's not coming back. He laid down his life for us. And we owe it to him to honor that by living our lives and remembering him through how we act. See that Peter begins getting tears in his eyes as Johnny smiles. But hey, these weekly coffee chats have been fun. And I'm so glad we became friends and I'm always going to be here for you, pal. As Peter shoots a half smile, we watch as a car pulls up to the curb. A woman gets out of the car and she is revealed to be Sue Storm, played by Amanda Peet, who says... Johnny, Reed is calling a meeting about that mysterious signal he picked up from space. It's time to go. Peter, good to see you. Johnny gets up, hugs Peter, and says, You heard the sister. When the brother-in-law calls, I gotta go. But same time next week. Flame on! As we watch Human Torch burst into flames and fly away, Sue sighs. So much for me driving to pick him up. Peter, I hope you have a good one. As Sue drives away, Peter looks down as he suddenly gets a notification on his watch. He places it near his ears where he hear a voice on the other end that says, Peter, I'm chasing an assailant. They appear to be powered. They are headed your way. Suit up and help me out. We watch as Peter hangs up, runs to the back alley of the coffee shop, puts on his Spider-Man suit, and leaps forward as the title card appears. We cut to a woman with a hoodie covering her face running away from a man dressed in all red. He is revealed to be Daredevil, played by Charlie Cox. We watch as Daredevil is able to evade cars and pedestrians as he chases a woman. Suddenly we watch as Spider-Man swings next to him and says, Ah, Daredevil, don't you love leaving Hell's Kitchen and making your way to Queens? This is not exactly my definition of a good time. Now, reports state that this woman assaulted someone on the street. When the cops arrived and attempted to cuff her, she magically got out of the cuffs and ran. Oh, come on. Everyone thinks they're all tough until they get hit with some webbing from the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Watch as Spider-Man shoots webbing at the woman, but the webbing completely phases through the woman. Spider-Man screams, What the heck? I told you, she's powered. Come on, we have to catch her on foot. As the duo continues to chase the woman, we suddenly watch as she ducks into a service garage. As Spider-Man and Daredevil quickly follow her inside, we watch as the garage door quickly closes behind them as the duo is cloaked in darkness. Daredevil grabs Spider-Man by the wrist and says, I can sense two heartbeats in here. They can't take both of us if we stick together. Suddenly, the lights turn on and a band begins clapping. Bravo, Agent Star! You successfully managed to bring in the Spider and the Devil. The man is revealed to be Nick Fury, played by Samuel L. Jackson, and the woman is revealed to be S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Ava Starr, formerly known as the Ghost, played by Hannah John Kamen. Fury! What the heck are you doing here? That woman assaulted someone on the street! Don't worry. The woman who was assaulted was just Agent Hill in disguise. This is Agent Starr, by the way. She's a colleague of Pym and Van Dyne. May they rest in peace. Janet died? Not necessarily. It's complicated. Well, I'm thoroughly lost. 
I remember hearing about you, Director Fury. But why have you trapped us in here? Why have you trapped me here? I don't even know you. All excellent questions. How about we all have a seat and catch up? We cut to a few minutes later as we see Spider-Man Daredevil sitting down in front of a whiteboard with Nick Fury standing in front of it, with Agent Star and Agent Hill, played by Colby Smolders, standing off to the side. A few months ago, the two Agent Bartons uncovered a secret document executed be between Eleanor Bishop and Mayor Fisk related to the usage of the security cameras in New York. Coincidentally, the document was signed by Bishop, Fisk, and an unknown third party with the initials L.C., we have dug through the arrest records for the thugs you two have arrested in the past few months, and none of them signed their name with those initials. I do have to give you two props for your work. The streets of New York have never been safer. We also looked at the records for those arrested from the other heroes that you've been running around with. Luke Cage, a.k.a. Power Man, Jessica Jones, a.k.a. Power Woman, and Elektra, the former leader of the Hand. And still, no matches. Director Fury. If I may, what is the importance of this LC signature anyways? Sure, there might be a third party, but it is likely not one of Fisk's cronies. Not no. quite. As it turns out, the signature LC has appeared in a lot of contracts recently, specifically for shipments in and those shipments containing chemicals. We have our top chemical experts trying to figure out what exactly these chemicals could be combined to make, but if I have any guess, it's not good. So what exactly do you want Daredevil and I to do about this? Well, we have reason to believe that the mayor's moves have something to do with this. And no better two people to foil his plans than Spider-Man and Daredevil, his two most hated rivals. Now, the mayor is set to announce a new leader of Oscorp tomorrow. Oscorp? As in Norman Osborn's old business? The one and only. He has tapped a man by the name of Dr. Otto Octavius. He's a genius and known for his atomic research. He seems to be clean, but he could be a pawn for a bigger plan. Fisk is also bringing in Dr. Jonathan Drew, who has a history in New York. A history? Dr. Drew was a lab assistant to Dr. Vernon Van Dyne, Janet's father. When he was killed by a symbiote he was experimenting with. Drew was saved by an old friend, but that's not important. We don't know what exactly this relaunch of Oscorp entails, but knowing Fisk... It isn't for the betterment of New York. So we need you two to get to the bottom of things. Taking down Fisk has been a goal of mine since the very beginning. How exactly can we help? Well, when the time is right, we are going to attempt to arrest Fisk. We know he won't go down without a fight, so you two will, be, will need to be ready. But in the meantime, I managed to pull some strings, and as it turns out, Miss Warren's physics class will be going on a field trip to the relaunch of Oscorp tomorrow. Physics! Oh gosh, I'm gonna be killed. I'm late for class. Director Fury, Daredevil, pleasure as always. Can't wait to stop Fist, but I gotta go. Bye! We watch as Spider-Man quickly swings away as Daredevil stands up and says, I appreciate your faith in us, Director Fury. We won't let you down, as he proceeds to run out of the building. We cut to a classroom at Midtown High as we see Professor Monica Warren, played by Selenis Leiva, teaching her physics class as suddenly Peter Parker bursts into the classroom. She turns to him and scowls. Mr. Parker, an hour late today? You're getting close to breaking your record for running late. Come in and take a seat. We see Peter put his head down and take a seat next to Ned Leeds, played by Jacob Batalon, who looks at him and says, Dude, you really gotta start getting to class on time. People are gonna start getting suspicious of what you're doing. You know what I mean. But you can tell me. Superhero stuff? Yep, superhero stuff. Suddenly so watches Peter is hitting the head with a crumpled up paper ball thrown by Flash Thompson, played by Phil Dunster, who laughs and says, Come on, Parker. He used to be the crown jewel of the science department. Now you barely make it to class. As the bell rings, we watch Peter and Ned walk down the hallway together as Ned looks at Peter. So, did you end up talking to anyone about MJ? I can't imagine how tough it was dealing with that. We find out that MJ did not get snapped during the three-year period and outgrew Peter, meaning that she was too old to date him and she ended their relationship. No, I haven't. I've kind of been busy right now anyway, so it's probably a good thing I can't date her. Dude, you don't have to play all tough with me. I know it can be rough to lose an opportunity or something you care about. You have no idea, Ned. I'm sorry. I have to go. Ned stops in the hall as Peter quickly runs away. We cut to later in the night as we see Peter enter his apartment, which still looks run down. When he enters, we see Aunt May, played by Marissa Tomei, cooking dinner as she says, 
Hey, Pete, how was your day today? It was okay. How was yours, May? Well, outside the fact that rent is once again skyrocketing and we're having Easy Mac for dinner, it's overall not too bad. Thanks for making dinner, May. Uh, how long until it's going to be ready? Probably at least 20 minutes, dear. Okay, I'm going to go run a quick errand, but it won't take me that long. Okay, just be safe, Peter. I love you. Watch as Peter places his backpack down in his room and re-exits the door of the apartment. Once he exits the building, he starts running and jumping from building to building until he lands in front of a large painting of Iron Man. Peter touches the painting and says, Mr. Stark, I hope you've been okay. Mr. Murdoch and I are going to hopefully be bringing down Mayor Fisk soon. It's been an ongoing issue for us, so hopefully it'll get solved and it'll be a relief to us all. Not really dating anyone right now, but I do grab lunch with Johnny Storm every week. I really miss you. It's hard being a hero, but it's even harder when two of your heroes are gone. I gotta go, but if you see Uncle Ben, tell him I said hey. So you see Peter dry his eyes, watch as he turns around and heads back to his apartment. Cut to the next day at the new Oscorp building that has been erected across the street from the mayor's office. We see Professor Warren's physics class walking inside the building. We see familiar faces shuffle in, including Flash Thompson and Ned Leeds. Peter stays back a bit as we hear his watch buzz. As he touches it, we hear Matt Murdock. Peter, can you post on anything you might see? We are meeting with the team tonight. We cut inside the law office of Nelson and Murdock in Hell's Kitchen, where we see Matt Murdock sitting in his office. As the door opens, we see Karen Page, played by Deborah Ann Wool, who says, Matt, your afternoon appointment is here. Thank you, Karen. I'll be out in a minute. Peter, stay vigilant. As Matt hangs up, we watch as Peter walks inside the building. We see inside the building that there is a stage where the presentation is about to begin. On the stage, we see James Wesley, played by Toby Leonard Moore, and Leland Owsley, played by Bob Gunton, who has since recovered from the injuries he suffered during the Daredevil, The Man Without Fear film. As Peter and the rest of the guests take their seats, Wesley steps to the microphone and says, Well, thank you all for being here today. This has been a priority in the mayor's office for a while now. We are extremely excited to finally begin the new mission of the reformed and rebranded Oscorp, making New York the best it can be. Now, without further ado, I'm proud to introduce Mayor Wilson Fisk, Dr. Otto Octavius, and Dr. Jonathan Drew. As the crowd stands up and claps, he watches Mayor Wilson Fisk, played by Vincent D'Onofrio, walks on the stage, followed closely behind by Dr. Otto Octavius, played by Mark Strong, and Dr. Jonathan Drew, played by Adam Scott. We stand behind Fisk as he walks up to the microphone and says, Good afternoon, my fellow New Yorkers. It is an honor to be here with you all today to celebrate the relaunch of Oscorp. While Oscorp's name might have been damaged a bit by the actions of its former owner, I can assure you that Oscorp once stood as a beacon of innovation for the betterment of humanity. That is why I'm thoroughly excited to welcome Dr. Otto Octavius and Dr. Jonathan Drew to help spearhead the relaunch of this important company. The innovations you hear about today might only seek to improve New York for now, but trust me, soon Oscorp will create interventions that will improve the lives of people around the globe. Dr. Octavius, care to say a few words? He watches Dr. Octavius walks to the microphone and says, Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for such a warm introduction, Mayor Fisk. My name is Otto Octavius. I graduated from MIT and fell in love with atomic research. But most importantly, I fell in love with making a difference. I have a simple philosophy, that being, leave things better than you found them. I have used this my entire career. I'll give you a small example. Whenever we conducted experiments on radioactive substances, it would take hours to complete the work. So I invented a chest harness that connects to my spine and allows me to have four additional metallic-like hands to work with. Now, it caused my co-workers to give me the name Dr. Octopus, but it made the work environment so much better than I had previously found it. And that is what I hope to bring to New York. Now, it is my honor to share with you Dr. Drew and I's idea for what we'll be working on for the next coming months. It's a new contraption, the Clean Air Converter. With this new device, we'll be able to physically consume the pollutants that contaminate the air surrounding New York and create a safer, healthier environment for all New Yorkers. Now, I could talk for hours, but I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Drew. Wait! Before I do, I also want everyone to meet our lab assistant, 
Miss Felicia Hardy. Felicia, stand up. We watch as a woman stands up from the crowd. She is revealed to be Felicia Hardy, played by Anya Taylor-Joy, who smiles and waves at the audience. Now, Dr. Drew, care to say anything? Well, thank you, Dr. Octavius. No way I can follow that up, but I'm excited to be back in the Big Apple and look forward to making this place safer, healthier, and better than it is right now. Thanks. Much as the crowd stands up and begins clapping. As they do, Peter notices that Fisk is holding a thumb drive in his hand. As people begin exiting the building, Ned walks up to Peter and says, So what did you think? Pretty cool stuff, right? Yeah, I guess. I'm interested to see exactly how it works. As Ned begins to respond, he watches Professor Warren walks up to Peter and Ned and says, Parker, you promise me that if I help present you with an opportunity today, you won't embarrass me by showing up late consistently? Uh, yes, ma'am. What opportunity? Follow me. Watches Professor Warren leads Peter over to Dr. Octavius, Mayor Fisk, and Flash Thompson. Warren says, Dr. Octavius, this is Peter Parker and Eugene Thompson. They both sit at the top of the class in all of the science department at our school. Thompson was a former intern with Oscorp under its previous president, while Peter was given the opportunity but had something come up that prevented him from signing on. They would both be excellent additions to your team if you are looking for interns. Why, Peter, Eugene, it is a pleasure to meet you both. I'm always looking for bright young minds to help me make the world a better place through innovation. Why, Eugene, what inspires you to study the sciences, son? Well, sir, I just feel a sense of selflessness towards others. I just want to help any way I can. Good answer, son. Peter, what about you? I know what it's like when you have nobody to look out for you, and when people are taken advantage of by those in power. I think if we can find a way to make New York, our neighborhood, our own backyard better, then we have to do it. Wow, what a very profound answer, son. I'd love to have you both on my team. Felicia, come get these two boys' information. We'll be in touch. Watch as Hardy walks up to Peter and Flash and says, So happy to have you both on board. Here, give me your contact information and we'll be in touch. As we see Peter and Flash fill out their information, we watch as Felicia winks at Peter as we see Peter and Flash walk away. Flash looks at Peter and says, What a total poser, dude. What the heck was your answer back there? Don't worry about it, Eugene. As Peter starts laughing, Flash punches him in the arm and walks away. As we see the group leave the building, we watch as Peter stays behind and hits a button on his watch and says, Matt, I have some new information. 7 p.m. My place. I'll see you then. We cut to Matt Murdock's apartment in Hell's Kitchen later that night. As we see Peter slowly walk up to the door and knock, he waits a few seconds before the door is opened by a woman with dark hair. She is revealed to be Electra, played by Elodie Young, who says... Peter, so good to see you. Please come in. We are ready to start. As Peter walks inside, we see Matt sitting on the couch across from Luke Cage, played by Mike Coulter, and Jessica Jones, played by Kristen Ritter, who is now sporting pink hair. She turns to Peter and says, Peter, how are you? It isn't like it'd be late to meetings of the New York Defenders like that. Yeah, sorry about that. I still can't get past your pink hair. Why the change? Well, I thought it might be fun to test out a costume of sorts. You know how Matt does. Thought it would be fun. Plus, the pink hair and the Power Woman name have really grown on me. Plus, Luke likes it as well. Okay, no flirting during our meetings. Matt, are we ready to start? We watch as Electrum Peter take a seat as Matt begins. Well, thanks everyone for meeting again. I know Peter has some major news, but I want to go around and have everyone give their crime updates. Electra, you first. Well, I've been handling business around Brooklyn recently, and today I stopped Simon Maddox. He called himself the Killer Shrike. He packed quite a punch, but not too much for me to handle. Other than that, everything else appears to be in order on my end. Excellent. Thank you, Electra. Luke, Jessica, you're up. Well, I was finally able to catch and defeat Maxwell Markham, the Grizzly. He packed a punch as well, but I'm glad he's no longer terrorizing Harlem. And while Luke was off fighting Grizzly, I managed to stop Donald Callahan, a.k.a. the Squid, from robbing a bank. Needless to say, thanks to the duo of Power Man and Power Woman, Harlem is a safer place. Perfect. Thank you for all the updates. On my end, Hell's Kitchen has been relatively quiet. Stiltman caused a bit of chaos two days ago, but I was able to bring him down. Literally and figuratively. 
Well, it sounds like we have all made some good progress. Keep in mind that we still have some outstanding criminals on the loose. Hammerhead, Black Cat, and Jackal, just to name a few. Now, Peter, how about you update us on what has happened today at Oscorp? Peter explains the new invention Dr. Octavius discussed at the ceremony, as well as the flash drive he saw Fisk holding. If we can find a way to get a copy of that flash drive, we might get a better understanding of what this contraption might be. As much as I'd like to think Fisk actually cares about the good of New York, we all know this isn't the case. I can head back there now. I'm assuming nobody's going to be around since it's so late. That is a good idea. I'd also like to see if there's any security footage that was recorded. Maybe it picked up some conversations between Fisk and Octavius that could be helpful. If only we had some way of getting a hold of that. Well, lucky for us, I am a PI on the side. Jessica stands up and hands Peter a chip. Find the main security system and stick this chip inside. It will gather all the security footage and audio. It will help us plan our next move. Peter nods as Matt looks at him. Do you need any help, Peter? Nope, I think I got this. Thanks, guys. I'll be back before you know it. Matt smiles as we watch Peter walk out the door. Cut to Spider-Man sitting on the outside of the Oscorp building, shrouded in darkness. As he watches the final few people leave the building, suddenly he watches as Fisk, Wesley, and Octavius walk outside the building with Fisk speaking angrily. I did not hire you to delay starting work on this project, Octavius. I have people with deadlines who I answer to. You must understand this. Yes? I understand what you're saying, Mayor Fisk, but you must understand that I have major concerns about the technical capabilities of this device. I told you, I work to make things better, and I'm not going to sign off on building something until I understand the full design capabilities inside and out, especially a design I did not create myself. I look at it tonight and get back with you about some of my concerns and how we can best move forward. As Octavius walks away, Fisk growls at Wesley. If only I had dirt on him like I have on Drew. I want you to talk to our employer about this predicament. I believe one of his goons is an expert on neurological capabilities. Perhaps we can force Octavius to complete this assignment. Yes, sir. I'm on it. As Fisk and Wesley walk away, Spider-Man sneaks inside the door and begins looking around the building until he eventually finds a security system and inserts the chip inside the console. Spider-Man laughs. Man, it really pays to have people like Jess on your side. Now, gotta go find that thumb drive. He watches Spider-Man eventually starts crawling around the laboratory. He sees a thumb drive lying on a table next to the base of what appears to be the clean air converter. It hasn't been worked on much, but its design is still in its infancy. As Spider-Man picks up the thumb drive, he says, that was too easy. When suddenly he is hit from behind and screams, ouch! We see that Spider-Man's back has been scratched as he turns around and we see Black Cat standing there. Spider-Man, you should know better than to break into buildings at night to take things that don't belong to you. Black Cat? Are you working with Fisk? What? No, I'm doing this to protect someone who stuck their neck out for me. Suddenly he watches Spider-Man and Black Cat begin to fight. Spider-Man is far more powerful than Black Cat, but Black Cat is surprisingly agile. As the fight continues, Spider-Man screams, I don't even want to hurt you. I just want to find out what is on that thumb drive. I don't care what you're doing or what you're not doing. I'm not giving you this thumb drive. As we see Black Cat running around the lab, we watch as Spider-Man swings into her, knocking her over. And as he does, Black Cat's mask slightly slips off and Spider-Man recognizes her as Felicia Hardy and gasps. Watch as Black Cat gets up and runs away. As Spider-Man stands stunned, he turns and goes to the security console to retrieve the chip and speaks into his watch. I have recovered the security footage, but I was unable to get the thumb drive. But I did discover something that might be important. I'm on my way back now. Cut back to Matt's apartment where we see the group watching a recording of an exchange between Octavius and Fisk that took place earlier in the day. The exchange shows Octavius looking at Fisk and saying, with all due respect, Mayor Fisk, where did you get this design concept from? It's very complex, but very flawed. I assure you, Dr. Octavius, the person who designed these blueprints is very trustworthy. A skillful designer, but we need a true visionary to put it together, which is why I called you in. I appreciate that, but this device appears that it is made to release gaseous substances, not encapsulate them. This design sort of goes against the very idea of what you wanted me and Drew to come here and do for the city. Dr. Drew is here for his own purpose, but you are here for your mind. The design capabilities is no concern of yours. Simply making it more capable than the blueprint you see before you is your job. I understand your hesitation, Dr. Octavius. 
You are a man of science. I'm a man of results. So in order to achieve my desired results, I'm willing to increase your pay by $1 million for its completion by the end of the day tomorrow. I'm sorry, Mayor Fisk, but no money is going to get me to simply sign off on a project that I have major concerns about. I'm here to help New York, not get paid. Conviction. I respect that. I'll leave you for a few hours to get settled and come back to check on you tonight. But understand, I also have conviction, and when I want something, it isn't wise to tell me no. Matt looks to Peter. Something is certainly off here. If Octavius is right about this machine releasing gases of some kind, New York could be under attack very soon. It would be helpful to get that thumb drive. I bet it has a design stored on it. I tried to get the thumb drive, but Black Cat beat me to it. She was in the building, waiting. Not only that, I recognize her. She's Octavius' assistant. Her mask came off briefly, and I caught a glimpse of her face. So that means Black Cat is working for Fisk then. No, she actually said she wasn't. She was there protecting the thumb drive for a friend, not Fisk. Well, if we know who she is, maybe we can just nab her and bring her in for questioning. I don't think that's the best idea. If Fisk is at all made aware that we are onto him, he might change his course of action. We need to catch him in the act and figure out who this LC man is before he has time to bury the information. I still don't get how Drew is tied up in all of this. It makes no sense. I heard Fisk and Octavius talking outside. Apparently Fisk has dirt on Drew. I don't think Drew is too much of a concern right now, but Jess, it might be worth looking into. Right now, our main priority should be to find a way to get the information that's stored on that thumb drive. Suddenly, Peter's phone buzzes as he answers it. We see a text from Felicia Hardy saying, Congratulations! You and Flash have been invited to join Oscorp as interns. Come bright and early tomorrow morning for training. Peter looks up. Uh, guys? Felicia just texted me. I got invited to intern as at Oscorp. Well... I guess that means we should all call it a night. You have an early morning tomorrow, Peter. Keep us posted. Good work, and good night, everyone. As Matt smiles at the group, we see Peter and the rest of the members leave as Peter looks down. We cut to the Oscorp building the next morning as we see Peter and Flash walk into the building. Flash looks at Peter and says, What's wrong, nerd? You look exhausted. Spend all night texting your imaginary girlfriend. You know, Flash, for, mu for as much of a bully as you try to be, your insults are really lame. Suddenly, we watch as Mayor Fisk walks inside the building with Wesley. He looks at him and says, He assured you that this would work? All I need to do is attach this to the top of the harness? Yes, sir. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but his employees have never let us down before. We watch as Hardy steps out of the lab and says, Good morning, Mayor Fisk and Mr. Wesley. Mr. Parker, Mr. Thompson, please follow me inside. As Peter steps inside the lab, he notices Fisk placing something on the very top of Octavius' chest harness and quietly steps away. Suddenly, we watch as Dr. Octavius steps out of his office and says, Morning, Mayor Fisk. Arriving at the crack of dawn, I see. As I said, Dr. Octavius, I'm a man of conviction, but more importantly, a man who wants results. So did you have time to review the design and make a decision on how to best move forward? I did, and as the design sits right now, I can't move forward with it, at least in its current state. Again, the machine appears to be designed to release gaseous substances, not encapsulate them. But I did manage to piece together an idea of how I can improve it, specifically the encapsulation portion of the design. Excellent. Well, I'd love for you to get suited up in your chest harness and walk me through some of the specifics you have in mind. He watches Octavius walks over to his chest harness. As he begins suiting up, he watches a harness connects to his spine and eventually reaches the base of his head. When it does, the device attached by fists clicks into the back of Octavius' head as we see sparks flying and Octavius begins screaming, Dr. Octavius! No need to worry, child. He is fine. It must just be an issue with the harness. No concern. He watches Octavius slumps over. Fisk walks over to him and says, Dr. Octavius, are you okay? Get out of my way, you freak. I'm going to finish your stupid design. I don't want anyone to get in my way. No distractions. Let me work. Fisk smiles as Dr. Drew walks inside the lab. Oh, Mayor Fisk, did I miss that you were visiting today? Mayor Fisk made an agreement to check in on the progress of the experiment with Dr. Octavius yesterday, but Mayor Fisk would be happy to talk with you now. Come with us. Watch as Dr. Drew exits the lab with Wesley and Fisk. Felicia looks at Octavius, who is busy working on the clean air converter. She says, 
Dr. Octavius, Peter and Eugene are here to see you about the internship. Internship? You think I have time to manage an internship? Please. Out of my sight, out of my lab. Watch as Felicia quickly leads Peter and Flash out of the side of the lab and says, I'm sorry, something is off with Dr. Octavius. I'll keep you both posted. As Felicia closes the door, Flash laughs. Well, looks like my day just got wide open. Smell you later, puny Parker. As Peter stands outside Oscorp, he clicks his watch and says, Matt, this did something to Dr. Octavius. He is acting strange. We cut inside the law office of Nelson and Murdoch as Matt speaks into his watch. I'm in the middle of something, but let's catch up tonight. Watch as Foggy Nelson, played by Eldon Hansen, elbows Matt and says, Dude, no talking in front of our clients. I have to go. Seriously. My place. Tonight. As Matt ends the communication, we watch Peter head into a back alley and begin changing into his Spider-Man suit. We cut to a building adjacent to the Oscorp building where we see Spider-Man watching Dr. Octavius working on the clean air converter. Suddenly watches Black Cat jumps onto the roof. Spider-Man faces forward and begins to talk. I know you would come here, Felicia. I know you saw who I am, but I still don't know who you are. But somehow, I knew you would be here too. It doesn't matter who I am, but what does matter right now is that you stole the thumb drive. I need to know why you're so busy protecting Octavius. Well, I know you and your friends know me. I'm a thief. A crook. But I don't necessarily do it because I want to. I do it because it is what my father did. It's all I've ever known. He got arrested, and when he did, I became hopeless. No matter how much I stole, I didn't have a place to stay, a place to eat. I was so young. One day, I was sitting on the side of the street when Dr. Octavius found me. He just started talking to me and, well, took care of me. He taught me about science. He made me a better person. And I always respected him for that. Then why keep stealing? Why make yourself into a costume criminal? Oh, come on, Spidey. As I said, being criminal is in my nature. It's in my DNA. Plus, my dad was naturally athletic, huge basketball fan, and he also played a bit. So I played basketball and took up gymnastics as well. Made me nimble as a cat. Plus, these claws. I made them myself with help from Dr. Octavius, of course, and they pack quite a punch. Fun to use when people get in my way. Yeah, I know all about those claws. Regardless, back to the point. Why are you protecting the contents on that thumb drive so hard? Spidey, have you ever had a mentor? Someone you care about? Look, I don't get paid by fist to steal and cause chaos. But I know from others who do. And I know that Octavius is a good man. He truly took this job believing that he would help the people of New York. But now he's acting off. Not himself. I don't know what Fist did or what his endgame is, but I don't want Octavius to get caught up in it or take the fall for something that Fisk is causing him to do. If you had a chance to save a mentor, wouldn't you? We have a flashback to the end of Endgame where we see Spider-Man hugging Iron Man following the snap. Spider-Man chokes a bit but says, Yes, I'd do anything if I could, but Felicia, for me to do that, I'm going to need to know what's on that thumb drive. Black Cat walks up to Spider-Man and hands him the thumb drive. If giving you this means that Otto has a chance of getting himself out of this mess, then I guess you need to have this. Spider-Man stands up with a thumb drive in hand and says, Thank you, Felicia. I'll do everything I can to make sure Otto is not caught up in this mess. We watch Spider-Man leap off the building and swing away as Black Cat watches on. We cut to that night in Matt's apartment as we see Matt and Peter scrolling through various documents on the thumb drive. Peter clicks on one and it pulls up a picture of the clean air converter. Peter studies the blueprints for a while and speaks up. Otto was right. This thing is made to expel a gas, not encase a gas. I get that. But that doesn't mean anything if there is nothing we know that Fisk is trying to expel. I'm not sure, but I'll keep checking the files. We watch as Peter continues scrolling through the files as he eventually clicks on one that pulls up a chemical compound. Peter says, here we go. It's a chemical compound of sorts. Watch as Peter starts breaking down the compound when suddenly he stops and says, Oh my gosh, what is it? It's a neurotoxin. It will attack the nervous system. It's hard to tell the extent of what it will do, but it's enough that if Fisk found a way to mass produce this, New York would be in trouble. 
Why would Fisk want to do this, though? He doesn't seem like he wants to injure the people of New York. It just seems out of character. Well, Fisk and Wesley have been referencing some guy behind the scenes, and Fury told us to try and figure out who L.C. was. So, for the sake of piecing this all together, let's assume this L.C. is the man who Fisk is doing this for. Why does he have Octavius and Drew playing such a pivotal role? Wait, Peter, you said Fisk referenced having dirt on Drew, correct? Yeah, he did. Peter, that's it. Fisk is using Octavius and Drew as a shield. That way, when this project is done and the neurotoxin is released on all of New York, he can blame it on Otto and Drew. This must be some sort of repayment of a debt that Drew owes Fisk, and Fisk needed Otto's handiwork to make the machine as complex as this. Peter, when did Fisk say he needed the machine to be completed in that security footage? He said he needed it to be ready by tonight. Peter, we need to get a move on. Let me warn Jess and the others that we might need their help. But if this is going down tonight, we need to be there. Okay, come on, Matt, let's go. Peter, give me a minute. I need to suit up and I need to let Jess know. Matt, we need to go now. Peter, is everything okay? I promised someone that I wouldn't let their mentor down. I'm not going to do that again. I miss him, Matt. You slowly watch as Peter begins crying as Matt comforts him. Peter, what's going on? He died in my arms, Matt. He died. I should have been the one to make the sacrifice, not Tony. He did everything he could to bring me back, and before I even got to truly thank him, he died. I haven't been sleeping, Matt. I've been taking out my anger, my sorrow, by fighting all these thieves and crooks. Like what Tony would have done. Everything I have just leaves, Matt. They leave. Uncle Ben... Tony, MJ, why can't things just work out for once? Peter, life isn't always what you expect it to be. I never imagined that I would lose my sight when I was a kid, but I wouldn't be able to protect those who can't protect themselves if I didn't lose it. I never imagined my dad would die and that I would become orphaned, but it made me who I am. It allowed me to meet you and the others that I've actually grown to call friends. I know I can get preachy with Catholicism, but God has a plan. There's a reason Tony is gone, and you are here. He made the sacrifice for you. Now you have to do everything you can to make sure your sacrifice wasn't in vain, and you have been. But continuing to question if it should have been you or Tony won't change what happened. Tony's gone. Peter is still here. And you can do all you can to live your life in his memory and continue what he stood for. It's like your uncle said, Peter. With great power must also come great responsibility. Peter hugs Matt as Matt continues. And Peter, as I said, I'm going to be here for you. But now, New York needs Daredevil and Spider-Man. Are you ready? Peter lets go of Matt, shoots him a small smile, and reaches into his backpack and pulls out the Spider-Man mask as Matt smiles. Crazy the backside of the Oscorp building where we see armored guards carting in a giant vat of some substance. Fisk is standing on the outside of his limousine as you watch Wesley walk from inside the building. He says, Mayor Fisk, Octavius has successfully completed the clean air converter and has placed it on the roof as per your instructions. Excellent. Suddenly you watch as Spider-Man and Daredevil drop down from a nearby building. Daredevil screams, Fisk, tonight your reign of terror over New York comes to an end. Guards, stop them. I need to make sure this gets completed tonight. Stop them at all costs. He watches Fisk runs inside the Oscorp building as Wesley steps inside the limousine and drives away. Daredevil turns to Spider-Man and says, You go after Fisk. I'll take care of his goons and meet you inside after. Right, says Spider-Man as he swings past the goons and inside the Oscorp building. We then watch as Daredevil begins fighting all of the goons. As Spider-Man enters into the laboratory, we see that it is dark inside and there appears to be nobody around. When suddenly, Spider-Man's spidey sense kicks in, he avoids being grabbed by Dr. Octopus and his mechanical claws. Doc Ock screams, Fisk told me you are trying to destroy my creation, Spider-Man. I will not let you stop me from making New York a better place. Otto, you are not a bad man, and I don't want to hurt you. Fisk has altered your mind in some way, but trust me, Fisk is trying to use you to hurt New York. All lies, boy. I'll show you what happens to liars. 
We then watch as Spider-Man fights Dr. Octopus. Spider-Man purposely holds back in an attempt to avoid harming Otto, but Octavius is able to take advantage of this and begins beating Spider-Man. As we see Spider-Man lying on the ground with Otto standing above him, we suddenly hear Otto scream as we watch Black Cat jump from behind Otto and land next to Spider-Man. She says, Spider-Man is right, Otto. Your inventions are being used to harm New York. Please, hear me. It's Felicia. You have to stop. You pests, get out of my way. I will not allow two masked pests to stop innovation. We then watch as Black Cat and Spider-Man begin fighting Octavius. Spider-Man is injured from his previous scuffle, but manages to begin using more of his strength fighting Octavius. Suddenly, Octavius grabs Black Cat with one of his mechanical arms and flings her across the room. She hits a wall so hard we hear a cracking sound as she falls to the ground. Felicia! I can't, I can't move. You are next, fool. As we watch Octavius run towards Spider-Man, we suddenly watch as Otto is pulled backwards and thrown across the room. Spider-Man looks as we see Power Man, Power Woman, and Daredevil standing in the room. Power Woman looks at Spider-Man and says, Go handle Octavius and make sure that Black Cat's taken care of. You and Daredevil hurry. We need to stop Fisk. Spider-Man nods as he and Daredevil run to the roof as we see Spider-Man is running with a noticeable limp. We cut to the roof of the building as we see Fisk staring at the clean air converter, which now has a vat of chemicals inside. Suddenly we watch as Spider-Man and Daredevil burst onto the roof as Fisk begins laughing. You know, I somehow always knew it would lead to this. As I said, your reign of terror ends tonight, Fisk. And what makes you both so sure? Sure, you have abilities, some of which are quite impressive, but I have pure, raw, unadulterated power. You know, Fisk, my uncle once told me that with great power must also come great responsibility. I now know why he told me that, so I wouldn't become someone like you. Cut the cute speeches, boy. I do have power, and with it I am taking accountability into my own hands. When you have the power to shape the entire political, economic, and judicial landscape by a simple stroke of your pen, that is what I call responsibility. When you have costumed children who want to get in the way of this responsibility, you must give them accountability. Then I guess it is time to see how much power you actually have. Fisk laughs and begins removing his coat. Before we get down to business, gentlemen, I must warn you. As Omar once said, if you come for the king, you best not miss. We then watch as Spider-Man and Daredevil begin fighting Fisk. Fisk is much bigger than both Spider-Man and Daredevil, and with Spider-Man already being injured and tired from his battle with Octavius, it is not long before Fisk delivers a monster blow, knocking Spider-Man out and throwing him across the room. I guess it is just you and me, Daredevil, the battle that was always meant to happen. As long as you don't activate that device, fine by me. We then watch as Daredevil and Fisk engage in a one-on-one -on -one fight. The battle is close as both combatants utterly beat the other down. But everything changes when Fisk slips and Daredevil is able to jump on top of him and begins punching him senselessly. Daredevil stops before he injures Fisk too gravely and screams, I am Daredevil, the man without fear and the protector of both Hell's Kitchen and New York. You lost, Fisk. Step down as mayor and get the hell out of my city. Suddenly we hear a beep as Daredevil turns around as we see gas beginning to emanate from the clean air converter. We cut to residents of New York screaming as the gas causes them to suffer from some sort of psychological illusion. Back on top of the roof, Daredevil does his best to cover his mouth and nose to prevent himself from inhaling the gas. As he notices a cloaked man standing near the device, he screams, Who are you? What have you done? The man without fear. Ironic. I am the man who embodies everything you claim to lack. Fear. It's been the long game this entire time, but my moment is finally here. Sure, I had to do some evil things. Frying that scientist's brain was one of them, but it is worth it to finally get this moment. Thanks for taking care of Fisk for me. His services are no longer needed. Don't forget this. My name is Mr. Fear, and I expect that you will be coming after me very soon, Matthew. Daredevil looks shocked as we see Mr. Fear turn and walk away. Cut to a few hours later as we see police with gas masks on taking Dr. Octavius away to the raft. We cut outside the Oscorp building as we see Daredevil standing next to Nick Fury. Daredevil asks, So, what's going to happen with Fisk? The cops are making sure he's dealt with. What are you going to do about Spider-Man? 
Luke and Jessica took Spider-Man and Black Cat back to my apartment. I don't want their secret enemies being revealed if they are taken to the hospital. I have an old friend who I called to help them out. She is a great night nurse. Fury chuckles. So this man called himself Mr. Fear, and he's been behind Fisk this entire time? That is what I gathered. But more importantly, he knew my name. I don't know how or why, but I will get to the bottom of this. You and your friends better. New York is without a mayor, and all they have to protect them now are you guys. I have some reinforcements of my own that I'll call in, but for the time being, you need to find out what's going on and how we can stop this gas. Daredevil gulps as we see New York shrouded in gas as the movie ends. We have two post credit scenes. In the first post credit scene, we cut to the Barton Ranch in California where we see Clint Barton, played by Jeremy Renner, cutting wood in his backyard. Suddenly, we watch as Barbara Barton, played by Linda Cardinelli, runs outside and says... Clint, we just got a call from New York. Let me guess. Kate, has she learned some new trick with her bow and arrow and she has questions about it? No. It's Fury. He says New York is under attack. He needs our help. Clint puts down his axe and looks up at Barbara. Well, when's our flight? In the second post credit scene, we see Mayor Fisk being taken away by the police as James Wesley runs up to him. Wilson, sir. I'm so sorry. I'll do everything I can to get you out. No time, Wesley. But quickly, grab the piece of paper from my pocket. We watch as Wesley grabs a piece of paper from Fisk's pocket as he is placed in the back of a police car. Fisk yells, That is my final executive decree as mayor. Make sure it is executed before I am stripped of my power. Wesley quickly reads the paper, smiles and nods as we watch Fisk being driven away. And that is Spider-Man King of the Neighborhood. So... As you guys probably didn't expect, Mr. Fear has been the man behind Wilson Fisk the entire time. Now, how is this going to play out? You'll have to wait to see in Rebooted MCU Phase 4 Part 9. But with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. And once again, make sure you join the Discord and follow the Instagram page below to get all sorts of updates for the channel. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next week. Take care.